today we're going to be doing an activity. Um, you're going to have to, when you're done with your drawing, you're going to have to log into Google Classroom and make sure you, um, and you open up a document I ask you to open up in a minute. But for now, I'm going to just talk at you while you are drawing a little bit, okay? So our topic of today is how um, we look at objects in two different ways. One, we could just look at an apple like an apple. Or one, another way is to look at an apple and think of what ideas are connected to the apple. Um, so today we're going to be doing that. Now the reason we do that is because art, one of the ways that art communicates is by using objects and colors and objects together to create a message to give to the person who's looking at it. Now the interesting thing is different people get different messages just depending on who they are and how they see something. But we're going to talk about just how art communicates and one of the big main ways that art communicates is by using things, objects, colors to represent other things. In art we call this symbolism and it helps us interpret the message. So you might hear me say in the future, art interpretation. I am talking about looking at a work of art and trying to understand the message that we are getting, okay? And the first step in doing that is understanding how art uses objects to represent ideas or themes or concepts, okay? So um, just as an example, an apple is a really common object, right? It's a fruit. It could be different colors, red, yellow, green, or a mixture of colors. But, and we know that, we know how it tastes. It's crunchy, it's often sweet and sour at the same time. Uh, worst case scenario, it's mushy. <laughs> but beyond those descriptions, we might think of some things that are connected to apples. Now I like to start by thinking of stories that having, have apples in them as an important part of the story and um, think, what is the apple standing for beyond just being an apple in that story? And sometimes that brings you to some of those symbolic meanings, okay? So um, thinking, what ideas are connected to that object for me? So our topic today is an apple, okay? Um, we are going to um, be doing these things. We've done some of them already. So we did the chat box, now we're doing our warm up. Then we're learning about symbolism and art. So um, when you are done with your drawing, I'd say in the next minute or two, I would like you to go to Google Classroom and open up your quick, oh, not your quick write document, sorry, that is not correct, it's your Apple symbolism document. Sorry, this was from before. And it's number four, so I'm gonna put that. Okay, well, the first thing I want you to do in this document is do some basic description. And I'm talking about the kind of description maybe a scientist or an art critic would do. Um, almost any writing about art starts with somebody describing the art really carefully. So um, I want you to look at this picture of the listening room, and I want you to write um, what you see in terms of the size, the shape, the color, and what's around it, anything you notice. We talk about the color of the floor, the color of the roof, the specific green of the apple, okay? So I'm gonna go back to our apple image and I'm gonna put it up for you for a minute and have you just do a few minutes of description. So get ready to write in that document. And I wanna hear like stories that you know of um, in, the, in, in part two on your document. I'd like you to do a little writing about stories, sayings, companies, anything that's related to an apple in our culture or when you think of it um, in your life even. When you think apples, what do you think of? I want you to go ahead and do a brainstorm in part two, okay? And then we're going to have a quick discussion anything that relates to apples in this life or this world.
what comes to your mind when you think of apples? Now, I'm not talking about more description like red, yellow. I'm talking about like which stories or which ideas or which concepts are related to apples. Okay, do one more minute trying to think of anything in the world that you can um, that you can think of that relates to apples. I want to know about it. Okay, Wait. chat box to type in any story that you've ever heard of that has that an apple has an important role in. Okay, go ahead and type them into the chat box. We're going to start out with stories because often the stories use. Oh, I see Snow White. Look at that. And I also see the Bible, right? Adam and Eve, the giving tree. I don't have one of the giving tree, but yes, definitely. Any other scientific stories that have to do with um, Eros? I'm not sure what you mean by this one. Adam and Eve or the Bible. Yes, I like it. Any other stories, anything you can think of outside of Adam and Eve and Snow White? Though, yes, those are two of the big ones. Johnny Appleseed, yay, I have one of Johnny Appleseed in here somewhere. Where did he go? Oh, here it is, Johnny Appleseed, the giving tree, is that what the giver or the giving? The Sahara, look at you guys getting all the good ones. Yes, the Apple company that has, that produces all these phones and computers we're all excited about. Um, you're gonna fun once. It's about a bunch of for it, for it. Ah, school, what? Listen to you go, Caden. Yeah, something about school and apples. What is it? What about teeth and apples? What about sayings? Has anybody ever heard a saying that has something to do with an apple? And who it keeps away? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, 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 healthy. Look at you guys, you're hitting all of the big ideas that are related to apples. But we need to break this down a little bit more. Oh yes, yeah, somebody got Isaac Newton. You guys are making me so happy. Nice, Charlie. Um, and the apple fell on his head and made him ask a certain very important question. Gravity, Diego just got it. I don't know if you guys know the story of Isaac Newton and the apple, but supposedly he's a physicist. He was at Cambridge University hundreds of years ago, chilling under an apple tree studying or whatever, thinking deep thoughts. And an apple fell down and supposedly hit him on the head, making him think of a question, a scientific question. And um, the question was, why do apples fall? So when you see Diego at Echeverria saying gravity, it's because he knows the story and he knows that it made Isaac Newton explore this whole concept and develop a theory of gravity. That's a story um, in the Bible of, how he, of Genesis, meaning how humans began. And the story goes that uh, God created all of creation and in the end he created some humans and he gave them this beautiful garden to live in. And he said, you'll never need anything. You'll never grow old. You'll just be perfectly happy. There's just one thing. I don't want you to eat from that tree, the apple tree over there. That's the tree of knowledge and that's just for me. Um, so they lived in the garden forever happily. Um, but one day an evil fallen angel called Lucifer, changed himself into a snake and crept up into the tree and leaned down into Eve's ear, the woman, and he said, go ahead. Don't those apples look delicious? You deserve to try one. They look really, there's so many. No one would ever notice if one was gone. God won't notice. He's not noticing what you do here. Um, so Eve goes ahead and grabs an apple and says to Adam, hey, let's eat it. And so they both take a huge bite piece gets stuck in Adam's throat and creates his Adam apple, Adam's apple. That's why that little space in your throat is called an Adam's apple, y'all. And all of a sudden, something happens. They get knowledge. They become aware that they don't have any clothes on. And the angels swoop down from heaven and say, out, get out of here. Um, you're no longer welcome in the Garden of Eden. You need to go off into the world. You'll feel cold. You'll feel the heat. You will be able to have children and you will grow old and die. So um, the apple in this story, my friends, has a certain set of ideas connected to it. I wonder if any of you can think up the ideas. Now in this part of the class, I want you to go to section three on your little worksheet. And anything we talk about as being a concept or an idea connected to an apple through these stories, I want you to type down, okay? So I wonder if any of you um, 
what is an idea? So it's more than just eating a fruit. It's not like um, God just meant this apple to represent a fruit that he thought was nice and only wanted for himself. No, this apple represented something more when Adam and Eve took a bite of it. What do you think, what ideas do you think are related to the apple? Aha, Abby said sins. Yes, indeed. That is one of the ideas that's connected to an apple, that it's a sin. It's a wrong thing to do. Um, and apples are somehow connected to sin in this story. What's another, there's some more things. I wonder if you guys can think of them. Like um, knowledge and being like self-conscious because they're conscious that they're cold and not wearing clothes. Exactly. Very good, Tabitha. So knowledge is another one, right? It's from the tree of knowledge. So by eating it, they all of a sudden gained all this understanding of what they were like as humans. They were no longer these free creatures enjoying nature. They became more like we are today, right? Wearing our clothes and all. Does anybody else have any other ideas? Remember that moment when the snake is trying to convince Eve and she wants it, but she knows she shouldn't. It's um, like temptation or lack of faith. Yay! You guys have gotten three of the main ideas right now connected to an apple. And it goes back to this. We see this apple that is, um, Snow White knows she's not supposed to take anything from strangers. And the witch offers her all sorts of nice things, a beautiful ribbon, a hair comb, but they're all poisoned, right? And at the end, she says, oh, it's okay, dearie, if you don't want to buy any of these, let me give you this apple. And Snow White knows that she shouldn't take anything, but she's been cooped up on quarantine, just like us, for months with those dwarves in that cavern. And she thinks that apple looks really tasty and good, and she hasn't had anything fresh for months. So she goes ahead and takes it. And what happens? Disaster, right? She falls asleep. <laughs> they can't wake her. Um, so the evil witch wins by getting Snow White to eat the apple, right? Hopefully you guys all know the story because I'm paraphrasing. But the apple kind of has the same role, right? It's this beautiful, tempting thing that Snow White should not try. Now, if you're a junior or a senior, you can think about the ideas that an apple might stand for beyond just being something tempting. It's tempting people to do something that they should not do, okay? Um, so in Snow White, it's kind of the same deal, right? Something tempting, something that you shouldn't go ahead and do. Okay, now some of you mentioned some other things. Let's talk about Isaac Newton for a minute because there's another kind of big idea that's connected to an apple through this little anecdote that we all learn in school, right? That Isaac Newton had an apple hit him on the head and it made him think of gravity. So now when you think of apples in this context, I think that somebody already said yes, connected now to the story of the apple um, with Isaac Newton that are a little different from sin and um, temptation, in like education almost. And I know somebody already said that, so let's look at this one too. So you can all, you guys can write discovery since you heard that in class just now in, in, in section three of your paper. But also, a lot of times when somebody wants to show that we're talking about education here, um, they will include an apple as part of the picture. Now, in this case, it doesn't mean sin. It doesn't mean temptation. It means knowledge and education, kind of more like the Isaac Newton. But knowledge has switched over to education. So that's another thing I want you juniors and seniors to notice is that an idea can start one way, and because it's in our culture for a long time, it starts being used in different ways, and the meanings actually change. And so sometimes, like one thing can have a whole bunch of different meanings, right? Um, the other thing that you might um, notice is that, so when you look at this apple, what ideas are connected to this particular symbol, the Apple computer symbol? It's, I picked this because I wanted to show a picture where we weren't sure what the Apple meant, but then some students started doing art interpretation and they said that they had some ideas of what the artist might be trying to say, which is the reason we're doing this. So I'm kind of curious if you have any ideas, why would the artist paint himself? Because that's kind of what he looked like with this apple right in front of his face, just floating. He's not holding it. It's just floating there. 